Here we go again. In our rate of change section for calculus, we are given the following. Graphs of the velocity functions of two particles are shown, problem A, problem B, where T is measures in seconds. When is each particle speeding up and when is each particle slowing down? So what we're going to do here is focus on part A and go through a rough way of doing this problem. And then later on, we're gonna do part B with a step-by-step -step, uh, process. So the first thing we want to do is recognize when does a particle speed up? So to determine when a particle speed up, we're going to just look at two things. We're going to look at the velocity function, V of t, when it's greater than zero. And at the exact same time, we're going to also look at the acceleration function when it's also greater than zero. So this will indicate when it's speeding up. Or when we have the velocity function, V of t is less than zero, meaning it's negative value, and the acceleration function is also less than zero, so that it is also speeding up. So what we can do here is just really summarize this really quickly. Well, when you have positive and positive, it's speeding up. Or when you have negative and negative, it's uh, speeding up. So that's when we know when a particle is speeding up. So now, what about when it's slowing down? So for slowing down, it's essentially the opposite signs. So when we look at our velocity function, if it's positive, and then at the same time, we want to check our acceleration, then it needs to be negative. Or vice versa, when we mix things up, we have the velocity function is less than zero, meaning negative, and our acceleration function to be greater than zero, meaning positive, this is also when it's slowing down. So how we can quickly summarize this, when we have positive, negative, we're slowing down, or when we have negative, positive. So if you kind of want to think about this, it's kind of like multiplication, right? Positive times positive is positive, negative times negative is positive, positive times negative is negative, negative times positive is negative. So what we're trying to say is when the, we have positive and positive, speed up, negative and negative, speed up. When it is positive negative or negative positive, we're slowing down. So what we want to now do is check out our graph. If we're looking at our graph here, what we want to figure out is some of the important value points. So we can break this up into intervals to look at. So one good interval is whenever we have a maximum. Uh, another good interval to look at is whenever there's an x-intercept, or in this case, when our velocity is zero, and here at two and any uh, endpoint, of course. So we're going to look at from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 3. So we can see that here our graph is positive and going up. Then it is still, our velocity is still positive, but then going down. And then here we can see our velocity is now officially negative. So from zero to two, our velocity function is greater than zero, but from two to one, our velocity function is less than zero. Now, the next thing we want to do is sketch our acceleration function. So we can see that our velocity is positive, but at one, it becomes negative. So that tells us that we need to cross the x-axis here, okay, uh, when t is 1. Then we can see that, okay, at some point, it's going to change from positive velocity to negative velocity. So we're going to have some kind of turning point at 
t equals two. Then we see that, okay, it's kind of starting to curve off here. So we might end up at another intercept here. So if we kind of sketch our graph, we know it starts off positive and then it goes, becomes negative. Then it goes negative. Then there's some kind of turning point. Then it goes all the way back up like so. So then here, our little blue graph here, this is our acceleration function with respect to time. So what can we say now? So from zero to one, our acceleration function is positive. Then from one to two and from two to three, we can see that our entire acceleration function here is negative. So now that we have both our velocity and acceleration function mapped out, we now want to check when it speeds up and when things slow down. So how do we see that? So let's check our intervals. So from zero to one, what do we have? We have, so from zero to one, what do we have? We have the velocity here is positive and we have acceleration here is also positive. So that, what does this tell us? We're going to speed up. Then we check our next interval. So what's going on in this next interval? Again, we have, uh, we're checking two things. We see that our velocity here is positive. And we see that our acceleration here is now negative. So what does this tells us? That we're going to, in this section here, we're going to slow down. Let's go a little more space. So now we're going to slow down. Then we keep checking our next set of interval from two to three. We can see that our velocity function is now officially negative. And we can also see that our acceleration function here is also negative. So what does it tell us in our last interval here? We're also speeding up again. So to finish this off, what we can say about each of these sections. So when does the particle speeds up? Since we're focusing on the time value, we're going to check the interval from when time is speeding up. So it speeds up from zero to one, so zero to one. Then we're gonna do a union. So when is it also speeding up again? Well, again, when we both the things are negative. So in this case, from the interval from two to three. And so that's when we are speeding up. Now let's check when our time values are slowing down. So it's just the interval from one to two. And so there you go, that's it. Now we want to use part A to create easy to follow steps to solve a problem like this. Since we have a method to use to help us remember when the particle speeds up or slow down, our first step here is to break down the velocity function. So step one. We want to break down the velocity functions into sections. So our sections are gonna be based whenever we have possible maximums, minimums, either relative or absolute. And we're going to also break into sections whenever we see crosses of the t-axis. So this is how we'll determine the intervals to look at. Our next step, step two, is going to be focusing on sketching our acceleration function. So we know when we have intercepts in the t-axis whenever there is possible maximums, minimums, or extremums again. However, it's a little bit harder to determine when we have a turning point. So in order to figure out when we start having a turning point, it really comes when we can see that our graph changes our original velocity 
our original velocity function graph changes from concave up or concave down and changes back to concave down or concave up, meaning we're checking to see when we have inflection points so that we know when we have turning points in our acceleration function. In our third step, we going to look at each of the interval sections and we check our velocity and acceleration. And we repeat this process for each of our intervals until we have talked about all intervals. In our final step, step four is nice and easy. We just write our conclusion. We state when our particle speeds up or slow down in our given time intervals. Now we have nice and easy to follow steps. Let us write down the, our steps in order to solve part B. In our first step, we're going to break things down into sections. We're going to follow that by, in step two, graphing or sketching our acceleration function, followed by checking the signs for the velocity function compared to our acceleration function. And in our final step, step four, we're just gonna write our conclusion. So now take a look at part B here with everything, all with all the steps written now. Pause the video, try this problem, and come back for the solution. Let's do this. We're gonna break up our graph into sections, starting with our first endpoint there. So that's gonna give us our starting intervals to be zero. Then we're reading from left to right. We see we have a local minimum at one. So we now have our first interval from zero to one. Then we're gonna keep checking our graph. And then we see we have a local maximum here when t is two. So that would be our second interval check from one to two. And as we keep going along our graph, we see we have a intercept when t is three, and that's gonna create our next interval from two to three. And lastly, as we keep going on with our graph to the very end here, we see that this is our absolute minimum, and this is gonna end our intervals we need to check. So the last interval is from three to four. And that's step one. Moving on, step two. We're going to be sketching our acceleration function. We're going to look at minimums and maximums. Our first minimums here, or first relative minimum here, is when t is one. So this lets us know that our acceleration function will have a t-intercept at one. Then the next relative minimum, or maximum in this case, is at t equals two. So this is gonna let us know that our acceleration function is gonna cross the t-axis at two. Now we need to figure out when there's a turnaround. So this lets us, we know that there is one when it's changing from concave up to concave down. So we have to start sketching our acceleration function in order to figure out what's going on between one and two, because we're not sure if we have a nice happy face like graph or a sad face graph. So let's check from zero to one, we can see that our graph is gradually decreasing. So this tells us that our acceleration function has to be negative. So it's going to start in the negative direction and cross t at one going from negative to positive. Then we know, since we have an inflection point at some point here now, we're going to turn downwards and that's gonna get, get us our sad face graph. Then we see that the rest of the graph at two is decreasing. 
So that tells us that our acceleration function is going to keep going down. So what ends up happening for our acceleration function here, we have something that looks like a downward facing problem or just a simple sad face. And that's it for step two. Now, step three, we are going to compare our velocity function and acceleration function. We can see that velocity will be positive whenever it's above the t-axis and negative whenever it's below. Similarly true for acceleration. So let's label this. Between 0 and 3, we can see our velocity function is above the t-axis, so it's positive. And from 3 to 4, we can see our velocity function is below the t-axis, so this will tell us that it's negative. Now for acceleration, we see that from 0 to 1 and from 2 to 4, our acceleration function is below the t-axis, so this indicates that they're going to be both negative. And from 1 to 2, our acceleration function is above the t-axis, so this is when we get positive. Now that everything is clearly labeled, we are going to compare the uh, velocity and acceleration. So we see from the interval from 1 to 2, velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. So this tells us that they are slowing down. Our particle is slowing down. Then we could continue comparing. So from 1 to 2, our velocity function is still positive, and our acceleration function has changed to positive. So this tells us in the interval from 1 to 2 that our ex particle is going to be now speeding up. Then we keep continuing. So we can see from our velocity function hasn't changed, it's still positive, and our acceleration function has now gone back to negative. So this tells us here that we're going to now slow down again. Then we check our last interval. So in our last interval to check, our velocity function has now changed to negative, and our acceleration has stayed negative. So this tells us that our particle from 3 to 4 is now speeding up again. And there we go. We've compared the sign changes. One last thing. Step 4, we need to write our conclusion. So the particle speeds up when time is in the interval from 1 to 2, or is in the interval from 3 to 4. And our particle slows down on the interval from 0 to 1, union from 2 to 3. We're mostly done. However, if you feel like writing this in set notation, then we have t is in between 1 and 2, or t is between 3 and 4 for when it speeds up. And for when it slows down, we can write t is between 0 and 1, or we have t is between 2 and 3. And huzzah! These are our two solutions, one in interval notation and one in set notation. And that's it. We're done. Huzzah!